Strange Mind 6. I'm your host, Ruby, and today we're going to be getting back into The Octonumi by Trevor Allen Force. And I would like to ask that you please hit that like button, and if you're not already, please subscribe. I would mean a lot to me. I'm trying to get to at least 1,000 followers or subscribers, and it would mean a lot to me. But without further ado, please grab your snacks, grab your drinks, or sit back, relax, and let's get into it, shall we? And we are taking the scenic route Y. Idly, Trad scuffs the surface of the drawbridge, pulling the last of the streamers from his head. As he and Grace cross behind Reg, small clusters of dried mud and stone hit the water below, the debris sending ripples circling out, distorting the reflection of the gray stone castle in the moat which encompasses the high walls and torrents. Tugging at his collar, VB encourages Trad off the dirt track, leading down the quaint, pretty village, nudging Grace, indicating for her to be quiet to follow, leaving Reg to continue onward, unaware of their literal detour, pulling a chunk of marshmallow from an overhanging tree, Vivi passes it to Trad, who offers a piece to Grace. Convinced she is dreaming, she accepts it with a certain amount of suspicion. Having seized a couple of goblets from the edge of the ornate fountain, central to the cluster of trees. Trad fills them with a single scoop from the liquid at its base, and when Grace refuses the offer of refreshment, he happily gulps the lemonade from each. Because I fancy to walk, why do you think? Reg snaps back at his brother. Suddenly aware that he is walking alone, he turns triggering trad to drop the goblets cram the last piece of his picklings into his mouth and assume his best innocent face while VB scurries to hide in his hoodie um grace utters still holding a large amount of marshmallows in her extended hand And Reg asks, watching as Trad's hamster-like cheeks attempt to chew. You're complaining about my choice of route because... Trad, now only able to mumble between chomps, holds his index finger, indicating for Reg to give him a moment. Finally able to swallow, he says, just checking, I mean... You do know that this is not necessarily the safest option. Not to mention, it's really out of our way. That would be because... Oh, I know. Access points close. Blah, blah. Or, he grins, you might just be lost. VB, be lost. VB repeats, now peering over Triad's head. Guys... Grace tries to interrupt. Lost? Me? That's rich. Reg laughs. You too. Grace continues. Isn't this? Meaning what exactly? Trad cuts her off as he joins his brother. Isn't this? Grace tries again. 
confusion evident in her voice as she looks around meaning you couldn't find your way out of a cul-de-sac with a map and compass and a guide Reg throws back at Trad strides pass Vivi giving Reg her best frown from his shoulder oh this from for the love of Grace shouts throwing down her m mellow are we or are we not currently walking through a fairy tale she demands yes they both reply without stopping Vib yes Vibi echoes yes she repeats what do you mean yes hey you lot she shouts after them when this has no effect she plops herself down on the nearest carved stone bench and shouts right i am not going anywhere until i get some answers vb vbo uh oh bb mutters wait grace we really reg attempts holding up her hand to stop him she continues look I think it's fair to say that everything you have put me through, I have pretty much taken in my stride. She pauses, considering this, then adds, well, ish. But this, this, she gestures at her surroundings. No, 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 no. This is not happening. Vivi looks for a response from Reg who after a moment heads back to where Grace is seated. Okay, okay. He glances around. Can I at least explain on the way? No, now! She folds her arms resolutely. How is it that I am actually larger than life in the middle of a made-up story from my mother made up story my mother used to read to me at bedtime that would be the best story of all time trad smiles as he reaches up to a high five to vivi vivi all time she repeats wait this is about you she asks but of course he replies as Vibi jumps to his shoulder and both assume the stance of a knight in shining armor just as shining armor envelops both of their bodies. Are you not a damsel? He asks as they both exaggerate their pose by placing fists on hips and jutting their chins out. Well, hesitating as her trousers and jacket transform to a shimmering satin dress of the palest blue. And were you not in distress? He enunciates his words as swords appear in his hand. He and Vivi engaging in back-to-back -back fighting of imaginary foes. I sparkling chiffon layers gather over the satin and did I not rescue you trad and VB take a low bow you did good sir she stands the gazammer veil from her peaked hat falling around her shoulders you did she smiles despite herself and allowing a small curtsy you're not even in it Reg cuts in glaring at Vibi, who turning her back on him treats him to a view of her backside anyway it's not just about you I'm in it too Reg his coat turns to armor you're the one who put me in distress Grace snaps 
causing Reg's armor to instantly vaporize. And, she continues, yanking the veil and hat from her head, slamming it onto the ground where it promptly vanishes along with her medieval attire as she again sits. It still does not explain how I am now featuring it in a fairy tale. Which, to be honest, is why we need to keep moving. You've seen how easy it is to get drawn in in here, he continues, indicating to Vivi to snap out of the illusion. If you stay for too long, the story will take you. What? How? What is the purpose of story? To entice you away from your reality. To absorb you into its world. You've just experienced only a small taste. It's worse if you are willing to play along. Passing through, it's fine. Hanging around, not so much. Why do you think children are so good at imagining boxes as castles? They really are castles. Grace asks doubtfully. They really are castles. He nods. Yes, but that's here. It's not, you know, real. When your mother read to you, Reg sighs, those stories came to life, right? Well, yes, but... And you were, for all intents and purposes, transported there for just a few moments in those words. He continues impatiently. I know, but it's... What? Being there? This, she stresses, gesturing the lemonade fountain and marshmallow trees. It is, if you let it, Mr. Regis, Reg. Trad says, indicating a group of villagers in the distance, heading their way. If you interact, Mr. Regis, if I give you the abbreviated version, will you please move? Depends on how abbreviated, she retorts, watching VB tugging at Trad's sleeve to move. Okay, he sighs, taking a deep breath, and as quickly as he can, he explains. So it works several different ways. The most common is beings either create or visit an insomid here in Tarelian. So something that already exists or something they make up themselves and having chosen to relocate to Fethris want to take it with them, which is a physical impossibility. So to try and capture the moment when in Fethris, he takes a break and takes a breath. They write a book. Trad adds, yanking VB from his leg, around which she has now wrapped herself, attempting to drag him away. Book, film, poem, Reg puts in, or comic, Trad adds, popping VB back into his pocket. Yes, Reg sighs, with a sidelong glance at his brother. Explanation still pending, Trad mutters. Or, being in Fethris, travel to a particular insomid by invite or accident. Accident? Not really accident, Trad corrects. More drift. Well, however they get there. However they get here, Reg cuts in, aware that the villagers have them in their sights and are closing in fast. The point is, your whole world, everything in Fethris, starts here. Name anything that has happened over there. Invention, craft, sculpture, anything, and it will have come from Tarelians. Even your so-called technology, Trad adds, unaware that Bibi is sneaking out and over his shoulder is merely an attempt to recreate what we have and what we can do here. Reg finishes. Take a book 
take books, photos, computers, for example. Trad comments. We carry all our information with us, as you know, Reg adds. But in Fethris, unless you are a regen, you only have to recall. And you only have recall of your current life. But memories, all of them. You still stick with them. And they stick with you, Trad says, tapping the side of his head. All in here, but deep, real deep. Phoebe silently copies the movement behind him, explaining why some next gens think they have had a previous life. Reg adds, because they have, Trad concludes, Vivi nods. Right, so new bright shiny ideas over there are just rehashed ideas from here? Okay, Reg says, assisting her up. Can we? He asks, gently guiding her along. Hovering to Grace's forearms, Vivi tugs at her sleeve, shooting a sly smile to Trad who instinctively touches her breast pocket who instinctively touches his breast pocket well just a second rehashed ideas grace says resisting reg's attempt to get her to move everything starts from somewhere right reg replies realizing that Grace will not budge. Right? And that somewhere is... Thought, she replies hesitantly. Correct. So we, Terrarians, over here at least, can create our own realities. As can Amotherians. Trad adds. Yes, Reg agrees, but not always with so much success or speed, which given their loss of basic Tyrellian's belief is no bad thing, Reg says to his brother, to which they both nod in agreement. Anyway, the point is, we create these worlds and again try to recreate them consciously or unconsciously in Fethris. Why do you think theme parks exist? Trad says as Reg and Vivi try to guide Grace away from the bench. Of course, it is so much easier here. We don't have the same constraints as you do. Really? She says, promptly dropping back onto the seat. So how exactly does the think and it will be thing work, huh? For crying, Reg sighs. Vivi, beep, you're on your own. Vivi mutters and retreats back to Trad's shoulder. Okay, so all the stuff at the asylum, how did that happen? Reg asks. I have no idea how it happened. She replies, all I know is that I was angry and, well, it happened. Put your hand out. I... Just do it right now. What's your favorite ice cream? Sorry? Ice cream flavor. Well, it's... A large dollop of strawberry ice cream plops into her hands and starts to melt. Oh my... Vivi claps and smiles. Grace, still holding her hands out so as to avoid the melting concoction hitting her trousers. Huh. Should have mentioned how important detail is. Trad comments, gesturing the dripping ice cream. Think of a bowl next time. Now move. Did I do this? Looking after them and then back at the ice cream. Of course, as I said, it's easy over here. What's really impressive is what you did in Fethris. He calls back. Come on. How do I... 
think it's gone. Right, it vanishes. What else can I do? She says excitedly, running to catch up with them. Right now, not much. You're being monitored, Reg adds as she opens her mouth to speak. For your own safety, he continues, referencing her hands. You could have gotten hurt. By ice cream? You could have thought of soup. Shaking her hands as a demonstration of burnt fingers, VB waves them and blows on them frantically. Right. No bowl. Got it, Grace says. Details. Isn't it dangerous? She asks, hurrying to keep up. I mean, we think all the time. What about random thoughts? Which is exactly why it's a blessing that it's so much harder in Fethris. Trad adds, true, but in my, well, in any insomnet, you have to hold a thought for it to manifest. Reg replies, fleeting thoughts are usually extinguished before they get a hold and counter thoughts sort of well stuff out for example he holds out his right hand I fancy some chocolate a large bar of chocolate appears oh he continues but I am about to have lunch it disappears see it takes much longer in Fethris Trad adds picking up the pace which, like I said, is not a bad thing. Then, of course, there's that annoying little voice in your head. Chad begins. Little voice in your head? I hardly think... You mean you're conscious? Grace asks. Mr. Regis, a narrator is so much more than a little voice in... Like, the little crickets, she adds. Always the crickets. One movie credit, and it's like... He's the gold standard, Mr. Regis, among other things. <laughs> Reg smiles, but yeah. More like having your mom with you all the time on your back. Nag, 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 Trad mutters, opening and closing his elongated fingers and thumb, imitating speech and proceeds to hold a conversation with his hands. Trad, I really think you should do this. Trad, I rather think that's a bad idea. Don't do this. Trad, don't do that. Pausing to see why VB is tapping his shoulder, Trad becomes aware that both Grace and Reg are staring and stops abruptly. Well, you get the idea, he says, thrusting his now silent hands into his pocket. Your brother just cannot help himself, can he? Anyway, Reg continues, no one enters Fethris alone. So, Grace asks, that little voice in my head, are where all the ideas come from? Mr. Regis, I really do think, I really do not think now is the time. The questions will be asked. Sort of. Reg continues, completely ignoring the advice from the little voice in his head. Over here, we have a lot of people who can't, don't, or simply won't travel to Fethris, but still want to contribute, so they float them. Their ideas, you know? A light bulb moment, or when a song tune just pops into your head. I thought we were not mentioning the voices. Or when they just cannot keep their nose out of your life, Trad continues. Is there no end to your brother's charm, Mr. Regis? Right, Grace nods, unconvinced. Look, we all have. Reg hesitates. Mr. Regis, I do not consider 
that Miss Grace is quite ready for an explanation of narrators and their duties. You know, Reg is still hesitant, trying to find another word for narrator, any word. Inspiration. Yes, let's call it that. Or muses. Trad chips in. We are not muses, as he well knows. Tell him. We Terrarians have a whole department of muses. Trad smiles with VB cover covering her ears. Who are not narrators? They offer a whole different service. You do? Muses are the Mata Haris of inspiration. We sure do, Trav replies, making no attempt to hide the pleasure such thoughts are bringing. Where do you think inspiration comes from? Not from the harlots you're thinking of, for sure, with their willy charms and seductive ways. Right, Grace states, so everything, everything in my world, films, books, all exists here in your world, all from you. Now dogs, they offer admirable inspiration. With the exception of the animal kingdom, yes. He pauses. Look, Vethras has its differences, but basically our instruments are the same. Just Vethras has a whole load of sh Baby slams her hand over Trad's mouth. Challenges. Reg cuts in while Trad drags VB off. Like I said, sh stopped this time by her foot. VB potty mouth, she says. And what about her horrors? Murder, abuse, you know? The bad stuff. Grace cuts in. If Terrellians are all so good and wholesome, why is there bad? And there you have it. The question. Good versus bad. That, Reg says, that is a Fethris problem made by... But you just said, it's a Fethris phenomenon. He snaps. It doesn't exist in Terrellian. Until now, Trad states, putting Vivi back in his pocket. And we all know who is to thank for. Mr. Regis, Trad. Reg protests with a slight shake of his head. Look, he continues, the loss of abilities, Fethris side, also means that having it all is not so easy. People are just trying to get what they have here over there trad states okay some may be going about it in a very non honestician way and we are doing everything we can at the octonumi to redress the balance reg continues in answer to grace's point the whole purpose of the Alliance was to keep beings safe. Only in your instrument, though. Grace cuts in. I don't see anybody helping in mine. We do, and we are. Really? She says doubtfully. How? You found us, didn't you? Well, and we are helping you, are we not? So... You are secretly helping Fethris all the time. Well, you're not doing a very good job. Trust me, he says. Things would be a whole lot worse if we weren't. Worse? Worse? Grace blurts out, stopping mid-stride. So poverty, famine, disease, war, terrorism, not enough for you? She shouts, flinging her arms up in despair, pacing. She says, not to mention chil child cruelty, animal cruelty, the environment, deforestation, pollution. 
How could it be worse? She asks, slightly out of breath. We're working on all those things. Reg replies quietly. Working on? She shrieks. What the? Trying to rectify what Amatherians? Will you stop? Grace interrupts Reg, referring to us, me, as if we're so different from you. We're all the same. No. Reg mutters, not really. Not anymore. What? She asks, turning to him. Look. Reg says flatly, with his best fake smile. You'll be given the full-blown version at HQ, but we really have to be moving, ducking sideways into a brick archway. Set in a high wall, he says, this will do, quickly ushering Grace and Trad through into the garden beyond. He indicates the door on this other side. The calls of the villagers follow them as they attempt to persuade their visitors to stay. When things are back to normal, Reg says, grabbing her arm and breaking into a slight jog, I'll show you how to travel around the instruments yourself so you can visit any myth, fantasy, and make-believe you wish. But right now, he continues, arriving at the gate and swinging it open, it's our job to protect the insomnids. And that, my dear friends, is the end of this chapter. Of chapter 29. Definitely tune in next time to see what's gonna happen. And this is Ruby.